my father, if, if it is possible, may this cup be taken away from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. Uh. I don't ever wait, I don't celebrate the light, I live in darkest state, I know that God is right, I try to overtake, I understand, but I would rather underrate, they cast me out, he cast me down, I'm filled with hatred, I spread hatred around, until you drown, until you drown, in pools of misery making us equals now. I love when you hate it. I'm using your hatred. I'm that misunderstanding, making way to impatience. I'm that selfish behavior. I bask in the greed. I'm that sea of distractions, distracting you from your needs. I'm the king of deception, prince of depression. What you lack in is blessings. You lack in progression. That's perfect for me. That's perfect for me. Falling short of his glory. That's working for me. I'll be that serpent that slithering. I'm that snake in the grass. I'm that misguided memory of mistakes in your past. You can cry, you can moan, wallow sorrow and mourning. But if you're with me tonight, I'm with you tomorrow morning, all right? Get back, Satan. I am the God above all. I am the holy of holies. I am the son who was called. I am the lion, the Judah. I am creator of all. The prophecy will fulfill and all you demons will fall. I am the lover, forgiver, the healer, God of the sinners. I'm the great I am and I'm here to deliver. All this thinking and praise and praying, oh, you need to stop it. All this wisdom you speak and preach and you think you's a prophet. Evil doings are done. Evil doings are done. If they sin and I'm winning, Jesus, I already won. And it's only begun. Cause you say you the son, they are gonna strip you and whip you. They are gonna kill you for fun. Where do I start? Where do I begin? You're dying for people that's killing you in the end. These people are perfect. Why are they worth it? I made them and I love them. I'm the point of their purpose. Your love is in vain. They do not deserve it. A love that's undeserving without earning is perfect. See the visual. My love is original, unconditional. No matter your condition, my mission is to attend to you. I see my people crying and dying. Some are living, some are thriving. Some follow every last commandment, but it's the heart that's defining. So I'll show them how to live, and I'll show them how to love. I'll wrap myself in flesh as fully God and fully man. Father, I know what's next. Every trial, but firm, I'll stand. The greatest gift, the greatest love. Jesus Christ, the great I am. Good morning, Church on the Rock. I'm Alex. Thank you for tuning in with us today. Church on the Rock welcomes you to join us for prayer on Facebook Live, Thursdays at 12 p.m. and Saturdays at 7.30 a.m. Tune in as we get into a series called The Power of Parents' Blessings, led by our pastor, Asia Goburn, on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Church on the Rock's telephone prayer line number has changed. We will still hold prayer on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays at 9 a.m. Just call the number 916-233-0790 with the PIN number 504-837-POUND. Starting next week on April 13th, our medical ministry will feature mental health and wellness checkups, the checkups from the neck up. 
These will feature and include health chats, daily workouts, and daily medical minutes. Stay tuned, church. Thank you so much for tuning in, church family. We appreciate all your love and support, even in times like this. I pray that all of you are taking the time to get closer to God, reading His Word and being in His presence. It is important that we do not be defined by the crisis, but by the renewing of our hearts and the peace we choose to abide in. I pray right now for God's covering over all of you now and in the days ahead. Be blessed, church. C-O-T-R. Hello, good morning, and happy Resurrection Sunday. Listen, because of a day like today, we have the most amazing gift known to this universe that has been made available to us in the Holy Spirit. And listen, the reality is, unless we find ourselves in the right place, allowing ourselves to be used by God, we'll just remain just pods of potential and power. Today we're going to talk about what God wants to do as He moves you forward and how you can become more than just potential. God bless you. I hope you enjoy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome to Church on the Rock Online. It is Resurrection Sunday. Oh, I just wish that somebody, wherever you are, wherever you're gathering together, just magnify the Lord with me right now, wherever you are. Come on, let us just call him who he is, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Great I Am, Beginning and End, the King, the Awesome One, the Savior, the Righteous Lamb. Somebody in this place, just begin to magnify by the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I was so glad. I was so glad when they said, let us come. Let us come and worship. Let us come into the house of the Lord. Well, I am right here at the Church on the Rock, and I am so glad to join you here on this day that we are celebrating the resurrection of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It is a day like today where we get so excited about not only what God is, is doing and what God is getting ready to do but what God has done the prophecy fulfilled hallelujah that made provision for the very blood of the lamb that we could come to repentance come boldly to the throne of grace and receive mercy hallelujah the day where we recognize it made it possible for us to have our second chance third chance fourth chance fifth chance sixth seventh eighth ninth tenth chance as many chances as we need to be forgiven that we may be with him when all all is said and done. I am so excited, amen, to join with you today. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, wherever you are, I hope that you've got your, your notebooks in hand or whatever it is that you use to take notes. I believe that God has a word for us today. If you are taking notes, the word that the Lord has for us on this beautiful Resurrection Sunday is, it's in you. It's in you. Matter of fact, wherever you are right now, I just want you to say, it's in me. It's in me. It's in me. And then you want to turn to the person next to you, wherever they are, and just say, it's in you. It's in you. It's in you. Come on, come on. Let's get into the word this morning. We're going to open up with Matthew chapter 13, verse 3 through 9. And this is Jesus speaking in parables. He said, then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Let us pray this morning. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to come. To come together, Lord God, and to receive your word. We are so excited to be in your presence, oh God. And we don't take it for granted. 
And I pray right now, Lord God, against any distraction, any hindrance that will prevent your people from hearing this word this morning. Lord, may it be your voice that they hear through me. Lord God, I decrease as you increase until there is no me left. Oh God, I pray that they are engaged by this word, equipped by this word, empowered by this word, and encouraged to do your will on this earth. Help me, Lord God, to declare publicly what you have given me in our secret place. It is in the matchless name of Jesus we pray and everyone said Amen, amen, amen. Well, today is the day. Today is the day that we recognize and we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. The reality is we celebrate every every Sunday. In fact, not even every Sunday. We celebrate every every day. If you're anything like me, I thank God every morning. I wake up, my God, I thank you. I thank you for dying for my sins, oh, Father God. You didn't have to do it, but you did. But today is a day that we recognize it. And it's, it's also the day where we celebrate the moment that changed everything. Everything. It's the moment that changed everything. It was the prophecy fulfilled. It was the, it was the moment that the Old Testament scriptures talked about. It was the moment where heaven, Lord, became open to us. It, it, was, the, it was the moment where we had the opportunity to walk in repentance and, and to walk in the, in the things that God had called us to walk in. It is the moment, it is the moment where we were, where the sin of, of, of the, the gap of sin was closed once and for all. It was a moment where the, where, where God displayed what true sacrificial love looks like. A moment where God showed us that the truest form of love is a love that's not only in action, but it pursues. A love that came and waded through the muck and the mire to pursue us, that we would be redeemed. It is a, it's a wonderful day, Church on the Rock family. It's a wonderful day, but it's also a day that put everything into, into perspective. A day that, that put, put Old Testament scriptures even into perspective. You re remember the story of Hosea where, where God called the, the man of God to, to marry a promiscuous woman. To marry, to marry a promiscuous woman named, named Gomer. And he went and, and out of obedience and he, and he married the woman named Gomer. And he married her and they had children. And, and there was a moment where, where as they were married, she went out and she went back to her old ways. And, and, and that's a moment where, where, where Hosea goes and he walks through all the town and he goes to find his wife. And he's knocking on door to door to door. And finally, he finds the, the place where his wife is and, and the moment where he pays money for what is already his. You see, it's, 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 a, it's the same thing that happens to us today, and, and God says it in, in Scripture. It's all to, to, to show us what it's like to have a love for people that will turn and that will turn away from you and will serve other, other gods. It's a, it's a moment like today that puts that Scripture into perspective as God is saying, listen, I, I love you this much that I'm going to go place to place, door to door to find you, to wade through the muck and the mire, to go places where nobody else will go to find you and to buy back what's already mine. It's a moment that puts that scripture into perspective. It's, it's days like today that puts the, the story of the, of the Passover into perspective. You see, it's not just the children of Israel that get to rejoice in the blood of the lamb, but, but it's also us today. You remember the story as God had called the children of Israel to take the lamb's blood and smear it upon the doorpost. And as they smeared it upon the, the doorpost, the, the plague of the firstborn would pass right over. It's, it's not just them that got to enjoy the power of the blood, but a day like today is a day where we recognize that we too get to enjoy and, and, and live and, and abide in the power of the blood of the lamb that causes everything that the enemy is trying to do against us to pass right over we can abide in that same blood of the righteous lamb that causes it all to pass over a day like today puts it all into perspective or how about Elisha and the widow you remember the story she came to to Elisha and here she was with with two sons that were getting ready to be taken into slavery because she wasn't able to pay her debts and so she comes to Elisha and 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 and, and she says this is my situation and Elisha says to her what do you have in your house and she goes and and she tells him I don't have anything and then she thinks and she says actually I have just a small bit of oil he says go and and get the oil and here's what I want you to do I want you to go throughout all of your community and I want you to gather as many empty vessels as you can. 
And the widow goes throughout all the community, and she's going to gather all of these vessels until finally she comes back with all of these vessels, and, and she goes uh, according to what the man of God told her to do. She gets her sons, and she goes behind closed doors, and she puts the vessels down, and she begins to pour the oil out into all of the empty vessels and what was once just a little bit of oil. Once she gave what, what little that she had to God, God brought the increase and, and she began to pour oil into the empty vessels and, and the empty vessel after empty vessel after empty vessel is filled. And the scripture says, and when there were no more vessels, the oil flowed or the oil stopped. It is only when there were no more vessels that the oil stopped. It's a day like today that puts that into perspective. It's, it's a day that we realize that, that God is, is the same God then. He's the same God now when he's looking to pour himself out, to pour himself out on any vessel that is ready, willing, and able to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. He's looking to pour himself out. Come on, the scripture says on all flesh. He's looking to pour himself out on any vessel that says I'm here empty. I have emptied myself of myself to be rightly filled by you. You see, today is a day that puts all of those scriptures into perspective. It all comes full circle, Church on the Rock family. You see, today God is still eager. Somebody say at home, he's still eager. He's still eager to pour out his spirit into any willing vessel willing to empty themselves of themselves, willing to come to repentance, accept Jesus as Savior, and, and that's why we celebrate every chance that we get, because we receive forgiveness, we receive help, we're going to talk about that in a little bit, and we receive power through his death and his resurrection, and we're going to talk about how that, all, how that all happens. You see, the death and the resurrection of Jesus that we celebrate today and every day, it provides us with the greatest gift known to the universe. You may have gotten some nice things in your life. You may have gotten a nice a nice uh, uh, toy or a nice uh, uh, car. Maybe sometimes somebody gave you some electronic gadget that you always wanted that somebody got you. But I'm telling you, a day like today is a day where we receive the greatest gift or have the opportunity to receive the greatest gift known to this universe. It's a day like today that made it possible. You see, that greatest gift known to this universe is God with us through the indwelling of his Holy Spirit. God, I'm talking about God, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of all things, the great I am, the beginning and the end, the author and the finisher, the father, the one who calls us friend, the, 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 the lion, the, the lion of Judah. This is the, the great I am. We have the opportunity to have him dwelling on the inside of us. If that's not a gift, I don't know what is. It's a day like today that makes that possible. Let's go to the scripture in John chapter 16, verse 7. It says this. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples, and he's getting ready to ascend into heaven. And he says this. It says, but very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. If I go, I will send him to you. Listen, let me tell you something. When we receive the gift of his Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit, God dwells within us. And because of his power and presence dwelling within us, we, we become like the vessels of the widow. We become like the vessels that, that Elijah brought that miracle to. We become like those vessels, completely empty, empty of ourselves, and, but then rightly filled with every good thing, rightly filled with anointing, rightly filled with that of much worth and, and power. We become just like those empty vessels. But we also become like seeds. We become, we become like seeds, and I want you to think of it like that for just a moment. We become like seeds in a scared world that's in need of hope. Listen, through the indwelling of his Holy Spirit working within us, we have help. Somebody say, I have help. I have help. We have help. And the potential of operating in great boldness and great power. 
in and through and by his spirit. Listen, in and by his spirit, we can heal the sick. By the power of the blood of the lamb, we can heal the sick. By the power of the blood of the lamb, you can have some folks that are feeling under the weather. Have some folks that are dealing with some situations. Let me tell you something right now. God is what he says he is. He is the king over COVID. It doesn't matter how scared or concerned we are about it. He is the king over COVID. Through the power of the blood of Jesus, through the power of the indwelling of his Holy Spirit, we can heal the sick. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can remember wisdom that is hidden within the recesses of our minds and in our hearts. Wisdom that we received long ago that we thought had been forgotten. Through the power of his Holy Spirit, it brings it into remembrance in the moment that we need it. Have you ever been going through something serious and you talk to this friend, that friend, and the other, and you talk to them and they give you some good advice, but it's not that deep wisdom, that deep fountain of wisdom that you really need, and then suddenly in that moment, the Holy Spirit brings to remembrance a message that you might have heard a long time ago filled with scripture or he brings you to your remembrance a good scripture or he brings to remembrance something that you that you had learned long ago that you thought you forgot that is the holy spirit power working on the inside of you it brings back wisdom that you received long ago power of the holy spirit gives us the ability to discern evil spirits it gives us the ability to know when something is something is off. It gives us the ability to know when there is an unclean or a foul spirit at work. It, it's not just somebody that's angry or somebody that's frustrated with you. The reality is there is an unclean and a foul spirit that is, that is operating in that moment. The power of the Holy Spirit helps you to determine that's exactly what that is. And not only can you figure out what it is that's taking place spiritually, but you can call it out by the power of the blood of Jesus. This is the power of the Holy Spirit spirit of his Holy Spirit. Listen, it also causes the lame to walk. It gives us the ability to cause the blind to see and the deaf to hear. It is not by your own might, by your own power, but the power of his Holy Spirit. It also gives us the ability to forgive. Listen, I know there may be some things that someone said to you and it hurts you. It may be something that someone did and it hurts you. And I know that, that, that you may feel justified in your unforgiveness. You feel like, listen, I, don't, I shouldn't have to forgive them. The, what they did to me was wrong. And I'm telling you right now, you are absolutely right. Whatever they did to you or they said to you that was wrong, they, they absolutely were not right about what they did. But I'm telling you this, by the power of his Holy Spirit, it gives you the ability to forgive them. Understand this, that forgiveness a lot of times is more for you than it is for them. There's a freedom in forgiveness. There's a peace in forgiveness. And his Holy Spirit gives us the ability to forgive even when we feel like they don't deserve it. His Holy Spirit. Somebody say his Holy Spirit. It also helps us to overcome temptation and pass all of life's tests. Listen, the power of his Holy Spirit, it gives us the ability that the scripture says that, that the scripture, that the spirit works against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit so that we are not able to do what we want. And so the indwelling of his Holy Spirit makes those past sins that you used to participate in, you can't even really participate in them anymore. They, they, it doesn't feel right anymore. It doesn't taste the same. It doesn't feel the same. It doesn't look the same. All of it, it, it just doesn't feel right. That's the power of his Holy Spirit. If it was up to your flesh, you would still be doing it. But his Holy Spirit has cleansed you and has changed you. Scripture says, behold, old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. It's the power and the indwelling of his Holy Spirit. Listen, there's so much opportunity and potential given to those who believe through his Holy Spirit. Listen, you might not, you can't see it. You're not going to be able to see it. And it's pretty impossible to tell, but there is a tiny seed in my hand right now. It's a very, a very small, I thought I almost dropped it. There's a very tiny seed in my hand right now. But it's not just any seed, though. This tiny and almost unnoticeable seed can produce a huge tree. In fact, I want you to I want you to take a look at this tree. This tiny, tiny seed can produce a very large 
tree. In fact, the scriptures say, say this in Matthew chapter 13, verse 31. It says, it says this. It says the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 13, verse 31 through 32. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. Listen, the reality is this seed that you can't even really see in my hand right now, the reality is this seed that I'm holding in my hand, you can't, you can't see it from where you are. You can't see it from where you are at home. That's just the reality. You're unable to see it. And also the reality is it as this seed is in my hand, it's just potential. It's just potential. It's not, a, it's not actually a, a, a full-grown seed yet. It's, it's just potential with the ability to become a giant tree. That that's what it is right now. And, and so we can look at that picture and we can say that, oh my gosh, it's a gigantic tree. It's a gigantic uh, a tree that birds can come and they can perch themselves in. But, but it's, gonna, it's never going to become that if it just remains in my hand. And that's just the reality. You, you got to understand that this seed was created by God with everything it needs to become everything it was called to be already on the inside of it. This, this is the reality. Everything that the seed needs to become that giant tree that we just saw and to become that, that tree that scripture just told us about, everything that that seed needs to become that tree is already on the inside. God created it with the ability to hold all of that power, all of that ability to become that great seed already on the inside of it. Everything it needs is on the inside of it. It's packed into that little tiny seed. But I, I asked you this morning, what would happen? What would happen to this seed? What would happen to this seed if, if I placed it in my pocket? What would happen to this seed if I took it and I put it inside my pocket, or I, or I just put it, I just put it here o o on this table. What would, what would happen to all of that power and all of that potential and everything that God had created it to be? What would, what would happen to it, regardless of how much power and potential it has on the inside of it? It would always remain just a seed wherever you are right now. I just want you to look at me, and I want you to say, "Just a seed. It's just, it's just a seed." If you, if you leave it on the shelf just to sit there or you put it in your pocket with all the potential in the world that it has, it would always remain just, just a seed, just a, a pod of potential. What would happen? It would remain just that. Listen, despite the power and potential that this seed has within, without acknowledging and acting on the potential to release the power, it remains nothing more than a tiny seed. It's just going to remain that. It may have all the power and potential, but it'll always remain just a seed. Listen, with all of its, all it is capable of, and despite everything that's inside of it, it'll go unnoticed and with no effect on its surroundings if ignored on a shelf or hidden in my pocket. Again, I just want you to say with me, just a seed, just a seed, just a seed. Listen. You and I are very much like this mustard seed in so many ways. And that's one of the things I believe that God wants to speak to you this morning. You and I are just like this mustard seed in so many ways. For those who have received Christ as Savior, you have within you an, an amazing amount of potential. You have within you an amazing amount of, 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 of strength and ability and wisdom and the, and the ability to remember wisdom and heal the sick and everything that Jesus did. You have all of that for those of you who have received Christ dwelling on the inside of you. Those of you who have received Christ, you have everything you need to win. Matter of fact, I want you to say that too. I have within me everything I need 
to win. And that's the reality. God has placed so much inside of you. Some of you have giftings and talents and abilities and skills that you might not even be aware of. And on top of all of the giftings and talents and abilities and skills, you have the indwelling of his Holy Spirit abiding on the inside of you. He's placed so much on the inside of you. But like the mustard seed, some of you are in danger of remaining just, just a seed. You're in danger. Yes, even with the indwelling of his Holy Spirit on the inside of you, even with all your skill, all your talent, all your ability, you're in danger of becoming just, just a seed, just a pod full of potential, but just a seed. Well, what are you getting at, Pastor Jason? Well, 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 how, how can that be? How can I have the, 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 the very presence and the indwelling of, the, of his Holy Spirit, the God of the universe dwelling on the inside of me in combination with all my talent and skill and ability? How can you say that I'm in danger of remaining just a seed? How does that, how does that work? Listen, there are far too many who allow themselves to, to, to keep their power and potential locked within as a result of a lack of wisdom, as a result of poor company that you keep, as a result of negative thinking, and of course, as a result of sin. For far too many people spiritually, you're still a seed struggling in the wrong environment. I need you to understand this. God created that mustard seed with everything it needs on the inside of it to become a tree that changes so much around it. So it is with you. But just like that seed, if I don't put it in the right environment, it's always going to remain just a pod, just a pod of potential. It's just like you and I. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13. Verse 3 through 9. I want to read our opening scripture again because in this scripture he's going to break some things down. In fact, let's, let, let's jump, to, let's, let, let's jump to, to that real quick. It says, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside and the birds came and devoured them. Somebody say the wayside. And as he, as he sowed, go, go, back to, uh, go back to four. It says, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside and the birds came and devoured them. Let's keep going. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. Somebody say the stony places. Then it says, but when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among the thorns. Somebody say among the thorns. Some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground. Somebody say good ground. I want to stop right there. Listen, in this context, the seed is in reference to the word of God and, 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 the, and how the word of God is like seed. And when you, when you have ears to hear, when you're ready to receive it, when you find yourself determined to receive it, you, you, that, that seed is going to take deep root. It's going to go into fertile ground. It's going to grow up, reaching toward the sun, S-O-N. It's going to then bear fruit, and that fruit is going to have seed of its own that you can disperse as God has called you to disperse. But, but I believe it can also speak to you and I in the environment that is bad for both our power and our potential. The environment that is bad both for our power and our potential. I want to ask you a question this morning. Do you need to change your environment? Does your environment need to change? What kind of environment do you allow yourself to be in? Is it an environment that will help bring out all that God has put on the inside of you? Is it an environment that is conducive to God being able to use you and display his power in inside of you? Is it, a, is it an environment that allows the potential on the inside of you to spring forth and change everything around you? Or is it an environment like that stony place that we just read about? Is it an environment like that wayside like we just read about? Well, let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the wayside real quick. In Matthew 13, 4, it says, As he scattered the seed, some fell along the wayside, and the birds came, and they ate it up. Listen, the wayside is that place where you get off the path that God has for you. 
The wayside is that, is that place where, where you fall outside of God's will. You fall out of God's will, and, and as a result, you get chewed up and spit out by every opposition in this world. Because you allow yourself to stay on the wayside. I don't know where you are this morning. I don't know who you are this morning. But if you find yourself on the wayside, get right back on the path that God has for you. Because that path that God has for you is conducive to what God is trying to do in your life. Don't let the birds of life eat up everything that God is trying to do on the inside of you. Get back from the wayside. God is saying this morning, it's a dangerous place. It's a place that is out of God's will and thus full of uncertainties and harm. A place where, where you don't have a chance if you stay there. What, what else? It's the, it's the rocky places. Rocky places. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 5, it, it says, Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Listen, the, the rocky place. Somebody say the rocky place. The rocky place. The, the, that's the, the, the place where there's nobody really around with any wisdom and encouragement. The rocky place is, is, that, is that place where a real relationship with God is not encouraged and it's not supported. The, the rocky place, it's a, it's a hard place. It's a, it's a difficult place. It's a, it's, a, it's a place that, listen, the scripture says that, that when you find yourself in bad company, it's going to corrupt good morals. And the rocky place is that place where you find yourself in bad company, constantly, always in bad company. And they're there to stomp out whatever God is trying to do in you. Anytime you start moving to new levels, that rocky place, there are people that are going to hate on you and try to pull you back down. Everything that God is trying to do on the inside of you, everything that God is doing and the way God is moving in your life, uh, it, it, the, the, the reality is that that rocky place, that rocky place makes it difficult to become everything thing that God is calling you to become. That's just the reality. Somebody say the rocky place. In the rocky place, the, the hard times come, but because your environment is bad, you're not rooted in the things of God, and you get discouraged, and you wither away. The rocky place. And then, then there are the thorny places. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 7, it says, other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants. I don't know if any of you are anything like me, but if you've ever done some yard work or you've ever done anything with gardening, there are weeds that grow, and those weeds inevitably are going to begin to, to bring, up, bring up on, upon plants that have thorns in them. If you ever grab a thorn, you're going to find yourself in a, in a hurtful situation because the thorns are made in a way where they are, they are, their edges are going the opposite way of the way you grab them. So if you pull your hand away too fast, it's going to cause even more, even more danger. And so you find yourself in a tough spot. Listen, the thorny place is where you surround yourself with people that, not, that they're not just haters. And they're not just people who discourage you when it comes to the things of, of God. But they're, they're, they're people, it's an environment that's hurtful. An environment that, that literally, it literally hurts. The thorny places where you surround yourself with people that cause you pain and discomfort. And it forces you to be hard and doubtful and always with your guard up. There are some things that God wants to do in and through you, and God is wanting to move powerfully in you. But because you've been hurt so many times, you've always got your guard up, even when it comes to God himself. Because you found yourself in thorny places. Now even God himself and in the indwelling of his Holy Spirit, you, 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 you're ignoring him, or, or you have your guard up every time he wants to do something, every time he wants to love you, every time he wants to prod you forward. You've got your guard up because you're so used to being hurt. It stomps out everything that God is trying to, to do. This is the place where negative mentalities try to choke the life and the hope out of you. 
But there's a, there's a, a point in the scripture where it says, but some seed fell upon the good ground, upon the good soil, and it brought forth much, much fruit. Listen, this is, this is what gets me excited about the opportunity. We have an opportunity to walk in the fullness of God right here on this earth right now. Listen, when a mustard seed is in the right environment and it starts to reach its full potential, it becomes a strong tree. It's not just any tree, but it becomes a strong tree. Listen, that mustard seed seed, it becomes a mighty tree and a tree in a way that everything around it has to take notice. When a mustard seed becomes a full grown tree, everything in the environment around that tree has to take notice. Has to take notice that things are different now. Things are not the way they once were. The entire environment around that tree begins to change. I want to say to you this morning that as you find yourself in the right environment, as you put yourself in a place where God is saying now I can use you now, you can hear me now, I can feel you now, I can do what I call to do in and through you. Everything around you is it's going to begin to change. Some of you need to just take yourself out of the environment that you've been in and put yourself in an environment where you can hear God and you can allow God to use you. And I guarantee you, everything around you will change. Things in your workplace will change. Things in your home will change. Things in your finances will change. Everything around you will begin to change. The people around you that you love, that really believe in you and trust in you, you'll begin to have an influence on them. Everything around you will begin to change, just like the mustard seed that became a tree. Listen, that mustard seed that became a tree, everything around it is affected. What else? Weeds can no longer grow in its immediate area because the mustard tree soaks up all the water and the nutrients. In order to become a tree that is that big, like that of the mustard seed, it has to take in a lot of water and has to have an intricate system in which it continues to feed whenever water is provided. And when it was, when it was a seed in a bad environment, those weeds are, are, are there to soak up all, the, all the, the water before anything else gets any. And that's what haters do. Before you get any hope, before you get anything that you can cling to that's of God, they just snatch it away from you. This is what the enemy does. And scripture tells us that his job is just to snatch away the word of God. Any of you who've gardened, you know the situation. If you've got a weed anywhere around that weed, there's going to be dead grass. Why? Because it's taking up all the nutrients. But when you find yourself in a good environment, yeah, weeds may try to come and they may try to soak up the rain. But once you get to a certain level, once you get to a certain place, oh, you're just so good. You've got such a, a habit, such a way of taking in every good thing that you begin to deprive the weeds of everything that they've been trying to steal from you. I'm telling you, if you just put yourself in the right environment, that, that the weeds will begin to get choked out instead of the weeds choking you out. When you put yourself in the right environment. Listen, birds are attracted to this tree because it's strong and it's going to hold up even in the, in the biggest storm. When you put yourself in the right environment, just like that seed, you find yourself able to weather the storm. The reality is right now, we're going through a bit of a storm. We're going through a storm, but I'm telling you that God is saying, put yourself in the right environment and allow the roots of my word to dig deep into the soil so that when the winds blow, you won't be blown to and fro and you won't blow over. Listen, the birds that make their home in that tree, they trust that tree. They've watched that tree. They know that when they perch in that tree, it's not going to fall over. They know when they perch in that tree, it provides them some kind of shelter from the storm. I'm telling you that when you allow yourself to abide in Christ. You become like that tree. And there are some folks that may attract themselves to you. And they're not bad folks. They're not the haters like we talked about before. But there are some folks that just need some help. There are some folks that need somebody to depend on. You become dependable when you put yourself in the right environment. And the good people will be attracted to you when you put yourself in a place conducive to allowing God to move in and through you. Keep this in mind. A seed cannot create its environment. A seed can't create its environment. It just remains where it's placed. You, however, you have the ability to notice when things aren't right. When I, when, when you have the ability to say, I, I can't, I can't, I can't operate here. I can't, I can't stay here. 
I can't continue on with these type of friends. I can't continue on stagnant the way I've been stagnant. I can't continue on. I need something is wrong with my environment. I need to get out of where I am and go to a place that is conducive to my growth. As long as I put this seed here at this podium, it will remain here at this podium with all the potential and the power already packed on the inside of it. It will remain just a pod of potential. But I'm telling you this morning, with all of your skill and all of your ability and all of your talent, in combination with the indwelling of his Holy Spirit, when you get up and get the boldness to get up to walk and move and find yourself in an environment where you can hear God, in an environment where you are around some people that are going to push you forward in the things of God, in an environment where you are allowed to get your roots deep into, into the ground that you may spring forth toward the S-O-N, the sun. I'm telling you, I'm telling you then, then you will begin to see God manifesting in your life in a very powerful and profound way. You won't just be a pot of potential. You won't just be a, a seed like that mustard seed, but you will be one who changes their environment as we know it. You can change the world. In and through Christ, you can change it. You can have an effect on your surroundings. You can, you can be dependable, one that people can come to and know that they can get wisdom from and help from. That's who you are. That's what God called you to be. But in the wrong environment, somebody say, in the wrong environment, I'll remain just a part of potential. Today, God is calling you to make change in what you allow yourself to be around. Yeah, we celebrate resurrection, the resurrection today. We celebrate everything that God did for us. That's just, that's just the reality. We celebrate the opportunity to receive the greatest and to walk in the greatest gift known to this universe, the indwelling of his Holy Spirit. But if you put yourself in an environment where, where God just, it, 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 where it's just difficult for you to become everything God has called you to be, yeah, you're going to have the indwelling of his Holy Spirit and all the power that dwells therein. But you'll be just potential, just somebody that God could use and God wants to use. But until you take a step forward, you'll be just that. It's a beautiful gift that God has given us. It's a beautiful gift, and God wants us to find ourselves in a place where we can grow. Tonight, God, or this morning, God is saying, change your environment. Change your environment. Change your environment. Somebody say, I need to change my environment. I need to change my environment. God is saying, right now, right now, right now, make some deci decisions. Make some, make some changes. Maybe wherever you, wherever you are, you need to carve and put aside some more time where you can just get before God. And you get some time where you can get into his word and receive more understanding. Whatever it is you need to do to become more than just a person of potential, do that and watch God work. If God can do something so great with something so small, just imagine, just imagine what God can do in and through you. Just imagine. Can you, can you pray with me this morning with every head bowed and every eye closed? Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord God, for what you are doing for what you've done and for what you are going to do. Lord, we thank you for the, for the blood that was shed for us. We thank you, O oh God, for giving up your body to be broken for us. We thank you for the crown of thorns that was placed upon your head when they mocked you. We thank you for carrying the cross through the center of town. Your love for us was a public display of affection. We thank you, O oh God, for the blood, for the blood that was, that was shed for us on the cross as they, as they pierced your side and as you continued to bleed profusely. We thank you. We thank you right now, O oh God, that blood that cleanses us of all unrighteousness, 
that blood, oh God, that, that blood, oh God, that gives us the ability to want to come boldly to the throne of grace. It is only by your blood. We thank you. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for the reality, Jesus, that you said, if I don't leave, if I don't leave after you were resurrected, if I don't leave, the helper won't come to you. And so we thank you today for the help that has come. Lord, that's, a, that's a, another big reason why we celebrate a day like today. We thank you for the help that has come. Your helper, oh God, and your Holy Spirit that leads us, that guides us, that teaches us, that corrects us, oh God, when we're wrong, that steps on our toes when our toes need stepping on, oh Father God. That Holy Spirit that gives us power, that gives us boldness, oh God, that gives us discernment, oh God, that gives us the ability to heal, oh Father God, the ability to understand. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, as we move forward into tomorrow, oh God, may we not be just full of potential because of the Holy Spirit that dwells on the inside of us. A bunch of power, a bunch of potential that's never used, it's never acted on. Lord, your word says that you call us to be not merely hearers of your word, but doers in and through the power of your Holy Spirit. May we do great things, oh God, determined to become everything that you have called us to be. We love you, Father. And we celebrate you, oh God, in all things. It is in Jesus' precious name we pray. And everyone all over the place, just shout with me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you. I look forward to seeing everyone again soon. God bless you. Love you. Hello, family. Listen, in tough times like this, it's important to remember that in spite of what it looks like and even what it feels like, that our God is absolutely a provider. And it's with that thought in mind that I want you to consider deeply this scripture. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 13 through 15, it says, Our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard pressed, but that there might be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need, so that in turn their plenty will supply what you need. The goal is equality, as it is written, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. The reality is, even in the midst of this pandemic, we still have missionaries and, 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 and ministries that Church on the Rock supports. On top of that, Church on the Rock, we still have bills to pay, pay and many people that depend on us. And we're not able to do this, and this is just the real reality, we're not able to do this without your continued financial support. The reality is we want to be able to support those who are going to experience some tough times. In the case that they do, we want to be able to be the church that rises up and supports the need if there's lack. And so please know that we're not able to do this without you. And so in spite of the, the negative effects of this pandemic, there are a multitude of ways that you can give and support. And I'm believing that you are going to trust God and continue to trust God in your giving. And there are multiple ways to do that. You can do that through Givelify, you can do that through PayPal, or you could also do it through the mail and mail your giving to the church address, 95 Hamilton Street, New Haven, Connecticut, 06511. I look forward to seeing what God is going to do through your giving and seeing the multitudes helped in this time. God bless you. Love you. See you soon.